Good evening, everybody. I am calling to order this meeting of the Town Council of the Town of Silver City. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and visible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda, number two, is ceremonies, and there are none tonight. Uh, the next item on the agenda is proclamations. And since March the 29th, 2016, is Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. The town would like to honor and recognize our Vietnam veterans with a proclamation. We're happy to have here with us tonight um, Edna Poulston, who is the region of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and others who are here with her have come forward to receive this important proclamation. Since Councilor Ray is also a Vietnam veteran, I would invite him to also come down and help me with this presentation. The United States of America Vietnam War commemoration gives us the opportunity for all Americans to recognize, honor, and thank our Vietnam veterans and their families for their service and sacrifices during the Vietnam War from April the 1st, 1955 through May 15th, 1975, and whereas more than 9,000 organizations across America have joined with the Department of Defense as commemorative partners to honor our nation's Vietnam veterans, including the local Jacob Bennett chapter of the New Mexico State Organization, National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and whereas this commemoration includes the 9 million Americans, approximately 7 million living today, who served in the United States Armed Forces during this period and makes no distinction between those who served in country, in theater, or were stationed elsewhere during those 20 years because all of them answered the call of duty. And whereas Veterans Affairs Secretary Robert A. McDonnell has designated March the 29th, the Vietnam 50th anniversary, as a day to honor those who have, quote, borne the battle, unquote, and to extend gratitude and appreciation to them and their families. Now, therefore, I, Ken Ladner, Mayor of the Town of Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico, do hereby proclaim March 29, 2016, as, quote, Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day, unquote, and encourage our citizens to recognize and appreciate the service and sacrifices made by the Vietnam veterans and their families. It is a great honor to award you this proclamation, and I'll ask Councilor Ray, if he would help me present it. On, be on behalf of all of us, on behalf of all of us, we truly accept this. Thank you. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would like to say that the Daughters of the American Revolution not only honor our uh, Revolutionary War ancestors, but we like to honor all of the men and women who have served our country in our several wars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here tonight. The next item on the agenda is public input, and there are no names on the list. So we'll move to item number five, Councilor Comments. Councilor Cano. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, the, the first thing is um, actually a question maybe to Mr. Brown or maybe to pretend medicine. I'm not sure which, but um, I'm just wondering when the lodger's tax meeting is going to be. Um, I've had several calls from different organizations who are ready to start working on their proposals, so they're anxious to know when the meeting is that they need to be at. So if we could announce that, that'd be great. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure which of you would know. If I may, uh, Mayor, uh, let me look up real quick. We had, Leanne, um, gone through the, and tentatively had made a, a date that's going to be in the lodger's, uh, tax, uh, request information, um, for Monday, May 23rd. Um, we have, a, she wanted to schedule between 2 and 5 p.m. so that there'd be enough time for, we don't think it'll take that long to present, but we'll make sure there's enough time for questions. You want to make sure there's enough time. I don't think she's been able to secure a location yet, but right now what she was suggesting was upstairs in the annex, um, as in that meeting room upstairs. And that's, but I think all that will be uh, well publicized when um, the lodger's tax information comes out. There'll be enough time for folks to a, you know, with the meeting and know about the meeting and then B, there'll be, I don't know when she'll have it due, but it'll be, be due in enough time so they can take the information from the meeting and implement it before it's due. Councilor, I'll make sure that she sets it back in the date by the next council meeting. That way we can ever uh, talk about it during the next council meeting and the following one. And if we had one in May before it, that way there's advertisement on cats. Yeah. as well as the paper. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and then the other thing that I have is on the 31st of March, which is um, Cesar Chavez's birthday, there's going to be a community day of service. Um, several organizations, including the Grand County Democratic Party, LULA Council 2003, and others, are working on a gardening project, and that's going to be at the Volunteer Center from 10 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, they're saying to please bring us back lunch. And then at 4 o'clock, there's going to be a, a march at Golf Park just uh, related to social justice issues, so bring signs, bring your voice, and, and join us for that. And then after that, at 5 o'clock, there's going to be a program and um, an enchilada dinner, a fundraising enchilada dinner dinner at the Volunteer Center, so hopefully people will be able to partake in at least part of the day. Uh, it's going to be a really nice thing. This is something new that we're trying, and hopefully it'll be, continue to be something that we, we do. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, uh, next week on March 29th, I am going to Las Cruces. As a matter of fact, it's going to be for our Vietnam veterans. Uh, we have been invited to go up there since we started a petition years ago to have a vet center here in Grand County and it never materialized but it's okay so we're going to have the we're going to celebrate it down there in Las Cruces the vet center was put there in Las Cruces uh, we worked very hard to get it we didn't get it here in Grand County but it's okay at least we got something there the reason is is what they what Mr. Pierce told us was that there was more veterans in Las Cruces Doniana which was true. So that's one of the reasons why we did not get a vet center here, but it's okay though. Another thing is that um, I would like to ask Mr. Brown if, if it's possible, if I may pursue a little project that I would like to see if uh, we could have a flag for the town of Silver City. I know we have a, um, a banner 
And I'm going to see if I could. We have the seal. The seal. I got the banner. What gets us? Yeah. I would like to see if I could pursue that. Well, we can work on it. And, and, with the permission of the council. And look at something of the relative value. So true. It's like what the flag is. Because when we've gone to meetings out there in, in, in Albuquerque and in and all in Albuquerque, a lot of the municipalities have a flag, and, and we don't have one. So I would like to see if, it, if it's okay with you guys if I can pursue it. Are you talking about the municipal mm-hmm. or everyone? Municipal Thank you. Also, I have been in contact with Mr. Brown, and we were, the city is going to do a little bit of um, studying on downtown lights, and I would like to see if we could put at least three of those tall lights, one on Broadway and Bullard, another one on 6th Street, and another one probably between 6th Street and College, simply because of what happened the other day. I truly believe that if, if, uh, if, pe- if it's well, more well lighted, people will, like, will feel safer downtown. That's my, that's my belief. One more thing. I will be talking to Mr. Scavern here in the next couple of days, and I want to bring up some language in the cell phone. I would like to pursue what I did a couple of years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Council Mayor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I got to see Cesar Chavez speak a number of times, and he was really a motivational and inspiring man. I have just three comments here. Um, I want to let the community know, in case they haven't been looking on the town website recently, that there is a legal notice on the town about bids being open for sale of property at 914 Pope. Just be good to know about that. There's a, the instructions are there on the legal notice. Second thing is I want to uh, talk a little bit about what it takes to really get a project going. No projects really go unless you have a persistent, competent, energetic idea champion to run it. And I know that probably just walking around Silver City every week, people will bring me easily a dozen projects they would like me to do. I can't do them all. I don't have that much energy and juice. So I have to prioritize them based on priorities of the town and what's really doable. But I am working pretty hard. So an example here, Councilor Ray just brought up the idea of three projects um, that we can really work on and do. Downtown lights, a flag, Um, Pedestrian safety, which would be a really big project that would require a number of departments to work together, also probably with some outside experts. Parking, always an issue. Did you know that if you walk from the visitor center over to uh, where the SoCo is, you have walked fewer steps than if you got out of your car in the Walmart parking lot and walked to Walmart? We actually have a lot of stuff that is not so much a project that's a problem as it is just knowing what's really there. With that in in tune, I want to announce happily that a project is moving that I have been supporting and encouraging for almost two years now, well over a a year, and that is that the Bicycle Master Plan is moving forward. And I want to really uh, acknowledge and thank the DFA, but more importantly, uh, Mr. Alex Brown, who through his innovation and ingenuity managed to cobble together the funding to get the master bicycle plan moving forward. There will be a community input meeting. This plan is not starting from scratch. It's really starting from a lot of work done by citizens over the years. There will be a community input meeting on April 27th, enough time to get that really out there to folks who are really passionate 
about um, walking and biking in Silver City. And I'm pretty passionate about having a pedestrian and bicycle safe community. So I just want to say that that is going. I'm very, very pleased about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Bettison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say I'm, um, wanna, um, I'm pretty excited about something that I had mentioned um, during the campaign that uh, I would like to see move forward. And I uh, have spoken with Mr. Brown and with uh, Jamie Embrick over in the Community Development Department. And this is something that I know our mayor shares with me. So it's exciting that um, I just want to thank the Community Development Department and Mr. Brown and uh, Jamie Embrick for beginning the process of taking on um, removing our plans off the shelves, dusting them off, and starting to revisit them so that they are um, created by Silver City for Silver City. Um, because some of those plans are out of date and they may not fit with what we're looking at doing right now. So it'll be a long process, but I'm, I'm so pleased that, um, that, that we're actually moving forward on it. It'll take time, but um, they're excited about doing it and just trying to see how we can get everybody together um, to hear their thoughts on various different things is part of the real thing they're trying to hammer out right now. So just please, please thank her for me and thank the department. And also, I, I should uh, also mention um, our assistant manager, um, James Marshall, because he's, he's also uh, implementing this you know, working on this. So um, I'm excited about it and um, I would encourage anyone who has ideas about streets and things that need to be paved to start thinking about it because at some point the Community De Development Par Department will put out and issue public hearings and or actually meetings on the infrastructure and capital improvement plan. I know they haven't been done yet, but and if you have a pet project that you'd like to see on that really large plan that's a five-year plan for the town, please come. I know there's a bunch of folks that are swimmers out there that would like to see certain things happen with the swimming pool, and all of your comments will be taken into consideration. So just realize that you're part of that process, and um, it, it's, it's how our town kind of does the cycle of improvements, um, because as we recently learned that um, to uh, at a district meeting that was held here for the New Mexico Municipal League on Friday and um, at a training on Saturday down Las Cruces that um, public monies, meaning monies from the federal government to subsidize some of the projects that we've been able to do over all these years is few and far between and competition is escalating. Um, everybody wants a piece of the pie and there's very few pies available. I had just had to use that analogy. I'm sorry. It's I think Pie Day is tomorrow or something. So I'm just in celebration of Pie Day tomorrow. Not pie like in the mathematical pie. I mean like pie eating the pie. So um, anyway, um, and I'm I'm so pleased to be able to uh, work with the council and with definitely with our mayor who is of the same mind. I think after we went through all that when we were running. Um, it's really exciting to know that we're all on the same page. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bettison. Yesterday marked uh, two weeks that I was uh, sworn in as mayor. And uh, I'd just like to make a few comments. But before I do that, uh, we have some important committees and, uh, and boards in the city that we need some help on. Uh, we have the Grand County Silver City Extra Territorial Subdivision Commission. Uh, we are currently advertising for one, one regular member and two alternate members. Uh, on the museum board, we are advertising one position. On the incentive review committee, we are advertising three positions, one member from District 2, one member from District 4, and one member at large. We're also advertising for one position on the cemetery board, and also for one position on the planning and zoning commission. 
And these are some pretty important boards and commissions, and so please consider that and uh, uh, get the news out in the community. And uh, people can get an application by looking on the, the town website. Uh, it's been a really busy two weeks for me, and I don't want to take a lot of time, but uh, I've never been in an elected position like this before, and certainly not mayor. And so it's really been an, ex an experience for me these past two weeks. I've discovered that even though the mayor legislatively doesn't have a lot of power, but the community uh, believes that the mayor can solve every problem known to and known to people. And so I've spent a lot of time on the telephone. I've also, along with Councillor Bettiston and Councillor Eamon Smith, spent a, a, uh, and Councillor Cano spent a Friday with the Municipal League on the campus of the university. And then Councillor Bettiston and Councillor Eamon Smith and I attended an all-day session for newly elected officials in, in uh, Las Cruces. And that was really informative, and I discovered that uh, the mayor really does have the ability to influence others and has the ability to uh, serve as an as a interface between the community and the city uh, in my role as an administrative part of the, of the, of the city. Uh, I do have a small role with, uh, with legislation in terms of being able to break a tie. <laughs> but I've also received a lot of phone calls from people who said, well, you know, you said you were going to do this and you said you were going to do that. Well, we've been in the process of doing some of these things and we want to meet with you and talk about what we're doing and, and what you can do to help us. I met with the Open Open Trails Group, Open Space and Trails Group, and as a result of that, I uh, met with Mr. Brown, and I think next week, or next council meeting, he's going to give a report on some of the things that's been going on with those plans. So, uh, in a way, he's taken some of the things off the shelf. I don't think he's ever put them on a shelf, and he's been working on some of these projects. And so, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, some of the things that, that he's been uh, spearheading. Uh, uh, also, uh, received phone calls about the parking spaces on Broadway having been converted from angled parking to parallel parking. And uh, Mr. Brown is going to go ahead and change that back in the very near future. And uh, when the bridge was being constructed, we removed the stop sign uh, on Broadway there by the museum. I think that's uh, Pino Salto Street. And that's created a little safety hazard because people coming from, uh, from uphill have a tendency to gain a lot of speed by the time they, they reach downtown. So uh, Mr. Brown has told me he intends to put that stop sign back. Uh, one of the things all of us want is to try and beautify our community. And I've met with, uh, with a couple of groups that are interested in doing that, and they're working with the city in some beautification projects. Uh, Mr. Gary Staley and some others have formed a committee, and they're going to be talking to downtown merchants in terms of what they can do to beautify just the front of the business. And one of the things they have plans for is flower boxes, uh, add some color to downtown, and also cleaning the sidewalks so that they look sort of new again, like they once were. Uh, another thing that several of us talked about uh, in the pre-election was recreational facilities for not just our youth, but for families. And uh, when uh, I was up in Santa Fe, uh, Senator Morales uh, uh, contacted me and asked me if I would go look at some of the recreational facilities in Santa Fe, which my wife and I did. And then about a week and a half ago, I got a call from him. 
and he's put together a group of some people from the city, Silver City, people from our neighboring communities, as well as the uh, county. And he took us to a site to look at as a potential place for uh, a community center. Now, this is the very beginning steps, baby steps, if you will, of looking at that type of project. And he also has interest in, uh, in somehow building a structure over our current swimming pool to make it an all year long facility. So there are some things going on that involve all of the city council, involve our state representatives and others that hopefully can get things moving in, in, in a good direction. Does the council have any additional comments? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, well, I've taken enough time. The next item on the agenda is changes to the agenda. Do any of the councilors want any changes made to the agenda? No, sir. Okay, no changes to the agenda. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of the March 8, 2016 regular meeting. Mr. Mayor? Councilor Amon Smith? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of March 8, 2016. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion as stated. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is uh, staff reports. Uh, Mr. Brown. Well, well, I think you, you guys covered everything that I was going to talk about. Um, uh, uh, James is going to, James and I will be starting to give updates on the, on the plans, uh, what has been done, uh, what we, uh, a lot of people don't think that very much has been done. But there's been quite a bit done on a lot of those plans. A lot of the plans are interconnected as well. So it may not be specifically involved in one plan, but it was referred to by another plan or, or different things like that. And James is working on that right now. And we've, we've had substantial conversations about that. And, and, uh, and, and like the mayor's discussion that I had with him, you know what, it's a good, even though we're doing it, uh, the one thing that, that the staff and, and myself, we don't do really good is advertise ourselves and what has been done. And, and uh, we're, we're going to work hard to, to educate the community on what's been done and what some of the challenges of getting things done are as well. You know, we've got a lot of these trails and, and the bicycle plan that we're working on right now, um, open space plans, uh, water conservation plan. Uh, some of them have a lot been done. Uh, uh, and so, um, like I said, we will be bringing a lot of that information back to you and, um, and hopefully uh, start working on an update of the, the comprehensive plan, which is a, bringing all these plans together and put them into one box and make them work together. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much all I've got right now. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is public hearings, and there are none. Number 10, the next item on the agenda is unfinished business, and there is none. The next item on the agenda is new business. Item A, under new business, is the approval slash disapproval of two public celebration permit applications for the Toad Fest tap takeover event scheduled by Little Toad Creek Brewery on April the 16th, 2016, from noon to midnight at 200 North Bullet Street, Silver City, New Mexico. License holders are Little Toad Creek Distillery, license number 63004, HC 68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. And number two, Little Toad Creek Brewery, license number 67021, HC 68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. Who will be representing the applicant in this matter? 
Councilors and Mayor, thank you for hearing this application today. My name is Teresa Dalberdeen, uh, representing Little Toad Creek Brewery and Distillery. This is our third year doing the Toad Fest Tap Takeover with co sponsor. Um, the co sponsor is New Mexico Brewers Guild, which is a wonderful organization that has done great things for us and for all the other breweries in the state. Um, they bring beer from around the state for people to try here in the, with the goal of promoting uh, local New Mexico craft beverages. Um, this year, for the second year in a row, this falls on the same day as Trail Days. Um, which is promoting the Continental Divide Trail. And we are uh, very happy to be sharing that day with them. We've been in touch with them and, and we're cross promoting each other and we think it's a perfect fit, the two events being on the same day. Um, we intentionally did that this year. It just happened to fall on the same day last year and we all thought it was such a good, good thing we did it again this year. Um, so it's a street fair outside of our business, extending our premises into the street with street closure on Broadway um, and on Kelly Street, and I'm sorry, on Yankee Street. <clears throat> and uh, we've already had that street closure approved by the city, and we've also obtained um, a special event permit from the city for this. <clears throat> we've spoken with the downtown merchants, and for the most part, all seem quite happy. In fact, after our last festival, three um, merchants sent us a thank you saying that their business was better because of our festival. We've made a big attempt because of complaints in the past to um, make the street closures look more festive with balloons and, and um, banners and made posters uh, advertising other businesses, anybody who wishes to be on our poster. And so I think that has alleviated some of the disgruntled um, downtown merchants, hopefully trying to make it a, a, a festival that, that brings the whole town into it instead of just us. Um, I think that about covers the details of the event. Do you have any questions? Council, questions? Okay. Council Medicine. Mayor, just a quick one. Do you have an updated um, list of alcohol servers that um, indicates that your permit on this current one expired and I don't know if you probably have an updated one with an updated expiration date? Yes, so the issue with the permits these days is that they take about four months. So okay. even though I, I updated mine, I have a temporary and they don't give an expiration date for it. So okay. they're not mailed, but they guarantee that once you've passed the test that it's valid. So okay. there's not really much I can do about that one right now. Well, I just wanted to make sure that, it, that what was going in was as close as, you know, because I knew you probably had it updated. Yes. Yeah, and I should probably include a copy of my temporary. That might be good, just so that you can, yeah, with the application, because I just, you know, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Sure, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Council Mayor, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is actually a question for our town manager, so if you'll wait with me. Mr. Brown, uh, when we cross the street and we have a festival downtown, does that entail any extra work for the town? Yes, on, on top of the regular work, normal work day, which means we, those employees aren't being productive working on other normally scheduled activities. Um, over the over last fiscal year, uh, we probably paid around, we paid an estimated 18000 in overtime for all the events from April through last year was November. And it was it was a it was a lot longer season than we normally have. Usually we we finish around uh, uh, late September, but we we had events into November, pretty consistent. So yes, it was about eighteen thousand extra above the normal work budget and funding. So eighteen thousand in overtime. Are there contractual obligations between the event organizers and the town in terms of like trash pickup and stuff like that? Uh, most of the time, the town does the trash pick. Then so that's right. a document that I did not include in this. Okay, all right. So there is a cost to the town. Yes. But the hope is that by having a festival or uh, some sort of event downtown, people, visitors, out of town visitors, people will be drawn downtown to um, have a good time, enjoy our beautiful downtown, and perhaps purchase other items. But do we have any analysis to show what the actual payback to the town is? 
No, um, it, it's very hard to do an analysis on individual events because most of them, for instance, the blues has been going on for a number of years, year over year over year. So the bike, the, the, the Tour de Gila, for 20 some years. Um, it's, it's very hard to pull those out like if they never happened. Uh, for instance, the, the bike race brings not just people, the direct benefit is that week, but the indirect is the fact that there's that international, national, international exposure where you have people coming into this community to bicycle, to bike, uh, all year long. Uh, how do you quantify how that impact is? Um, and you have the numerous, you have a whole bunch of different events that do that same thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I assume there's a way to do it. And uh, there are people out there that do it. So we can we can work on it or something like that. That would be a big project, but I think it would be really valuable. I'm a huge fan. I always go have a beer or two. And, uh, and, and so... I'm not pushing back against a bit, so I'm just asking for greater um, understanding of the actual impact. And so a research project we could maybe initiate in the next year or so. Thank you. Thank you very much. How many brewers are going to be represented this year? Um, we don't know if I know them, but at least 10 as it is now, and I expect there will be more joining before the date. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Um, do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, thank you. We have enjoyed you doing things for downtown. It is very nice. Keep on doing it. We bring, you bring in people, people like to come downtown. Even though it's a little bit expensive, like Mr. Bond said, but I think it's well worth the, the ideas to do it. Also, I'm very happy that you guys are going to have a five-foot fence. And that's, we needed that. And with that, I make a motion to approve of two public celebration permits applications for a Toad Fest tap takeover event sponsored by Little Toad Creek Brewery on April 16th, 2016 from noon to midnight at 200 North Pollard Street. Silver City, New Mexico. License holders, number one. Little Toad Creek Distillery License, number 63004, HC68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. And number two, Little Toad Creek Brewery License, number 67021, HC68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. We have a motion. Is there a second? Is there any other second? The motion is stated. Okay, motion. Second. Any other discussion by the council? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item B, under new business, is the approval slash disapproval of two public celebration permit applications and waiver of NMSA 1978 60-6B-10 of the prohibition of dispensing of alcoholic beverages within 300 feet of a church or school. Event information, two of the heel of Beer Garden, sponsored by two of the Heal Incorporated on May the 7th, 2016, from noon until 7 p.m. at 703 North Bullet Street, Silver City, New Mexico. License holders are, one, Little Toad Creek Distillery, license number 63004, HC 68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. Two, Little Toad Creek Brewery, license number 67021, HC 68, box 134, Silver City, New Mexico, 88061. Who will be representing the applicant on this matter? Okay. Any 
Michelle Fields and Jack Brennan. Jack Brennan. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Councilors, Alex, Robert, and Anne. Thank you for having us here tonight. Again, we're heading into our 30th year this year, so it's a big celebration for the Tour of the Gila. And we're asking for the permit for the beer garden in our usual spot for our downtown criterium and the spirit garden as well, we'll put on by Little Toad. It's a great addition to the festivities. And I just wanted to mention that we have applied for and received our permit for closure of the streets and regarding the Tour of the Gila. And I'll hand it over to Jack for the rest of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think this is our fourth or fifth year applying for this beer garden. Um, and it's been a, a nice addition for Tour of the Gila. We, we plan on having uh, an expo down there with uh, uh, with vendors, uh, with food vendors also at the Morningstar parking lot. Uh, there's a good potential of having um, a big uh, bike manufacturer called Trek. We, we sell Trek at the shop, and they have a traveling um, um, van or semi-truck that has... Um, this incredible display of what they call their Project One, uh, which is a custom design bike. You can design a, a road bike, a mountain bike, uh, with uh, different colors, different componentry. It's a really fancy operation with this with this semi truck that is coming to tour the Gila this year. So that, that's a nice addition. We have other vendors. Oakley uh, eyeglasses will be there. Merrill Merrill Footwear will be there. Plus a number of, of uh, local vendors uh, occupying the space down there. Um, just a quick note. Um, I just wanted a, a quick little story about uh, what happened in our at our store today, we had four tourists that came in, cycling tourists that came up from Lordsburg. Just to add what Alex is saying, that cycling does add uh, to our economy. There, four, uh, four people came in, a couple, a son and a friend, cycling across the country. And they're staying at the Murray Hotel tonight. They, they got into town early afternoon, visited a little toad, enjoyed their experience there, had a few nice beverages, came up to heal a hike and bike bought a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff and now is heading down to Jalisco's Cafe for, for dinner and probably going back to Little Toe before going back to the Murray. So cycling does work for our community and uh, so it, it's not just during the tour of the Gila week. We actually bring a lot of money in the, during that week but throughout the summer months and into the off season we see a lot of cyclists coming through town. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Does the council have any questions? Council Amon Smith. I just want to double check that the uh, waiver for the alcohol sale is an undergo near a church, church or school. Yeah, there's a letter included. Yes. I didn't see yeah. it. Oh. No, it's in there. It's I think the last thing. I just must not have scrolled far enough. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor. Thank you guys. You've been doing it for a long time. Don't give up. <laughs> the blue gun is good. People enjoy it. I know you enjoy it. And we all enjoy it here. We all have a beer down there. One of the things that we take into consideration doing all these public celebrations, whether it be the Blues Festival, the Clay Festival, or whatever, is that we don't have no real issues with alcohol being served down there. I think that your security people, the security people from the other organizations do a heck of a good job so we really take that into consideration and with that I will make a motion to approve of two, uh, approve to uh, two public celebration permits applications and waiver of NMSA 1978 60-6B-10 of the prohibition of dispensing of alcoholic beverages within 300 feet of a church or school. Event information tour the Gila Beer Garden sponsored by the Tour the Gila Inc. on May 7, 2016 from noon until 7 p.m. at 703 North Pullet Street, Silver City, New Mexico. License holders are number one, Little Toad Creek Distillery, license 63004, HC68, Box 134, Silver City, New Mexico. 
and number two, Little Toad Creek Brewery, license number 67021, HC68, box 134, Sewer City, New Mexico, 88061. And one more comment. I think that we should all tell the churches for allowing this thing to happen. And that's my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor, second. The motion is stated. Motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Item C under new business is the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2016-12, a resolution authorizing the submission of a New Mexico Community Development Block Grant Program application to the Department of Finance and Administration slash Local Government Division and authorizing the mayor to act as the town of Silver City's chief executive officer and authorized, represent, and authorized representative in all matters pertaining to the town of Silver City's participation in the community development block grant program. Mr. Brown. Before I start on this resolution, I remember one of the things I was going to talk about under reports, and it sort of works with, with this water infrastructure upgrade. Danny's is still coming to town, okay? There's a lot of rumors out there that we we have not, we won't issue of licenses to Danny's or stuff like that. They are still moving forward on their plans. In fact, I believe they uh, submitted their updated plans today. We've It's taken a little bit longer because we've had to work on working with them to upgrade our water infrastructure. That's why I remembered it when I was looking at this. And the town is working with them diligently to make sure it happens, okay? And now getting back to this, um, this is an application uh, authorizing the town to submit a community development block grant uh, to, to do six blocks of water line replacement in the uh, Chihuahua Hill neighborhood area from Robert Street down to Highway 90 from Dorothy to Alice Street. Uh, the grant is a total, the uh, full grant application is $475,776,000 to do all the project. Uh, a phase project was uh, number is $380,869,000. It would require a $47,578,000 match, uh, which would be budgeted in next year's budget if this grant is approved. Um, so with that, do you have any questions? Councilor um, Pedersen? Under item four, oh, thank you, Mayor. Under item four of the resolution, I'm just... Uh, Wondering, it says that full application amount be for the amount you stated of grant funds in phase B. Is that supposed to be like a phase B or like the letter B or just phased B? It seems like it doesn't yeah, make I sense. I think it's phased B. Phased B with the, the way it is? No, it would be a phased the the four the B four is a repetition of the B four four hundred seventy five thousand dollars seven seventy six. Okay, I just when I kept reading, I kept uh, my brain just kept not not understanding what was being said there. But it would be phased, yes, as you stated. Okay, yeah, so that way, if, if there's not uh, the full funding amount, uh, they're unable to fund the entire amount, we, c we could accept a three hundred phased amount to do portion of the project. Three. Thank you. It's just like which that I just didn't, I kept reading it and didn't know what I was reading. So. <laughs> but thank you for the explanation. Thank you, Mary. Any further questions? Council, Council Amy Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Brown, just for education of the public, could you tell us a little bit about what a CDBG grant is or, you know, so why it's, where it comes from, what it's for, and how it gets, um, how you decide to work on a particular neighborhood? 
Uh, okay, um, the community development block grant program is a federal program. In our case, it is a pass-through. It's administered by the state and awarded to the state. There are some direct allocation uh, communities uh, from the federal government, which would be like our community ranch or bus cruises, farm MSAs. Uh, so, uh, as far as the smaller communities, uh, uh, such as us, Danning, all the communities in southwest New Mexico, we have to apply to the state. Uh, it's uh, only low-income communities uh, qualify or neighborhoods. In our case, Silver City as a whole is not uh, qualified. Mm -hmm. uh, so unlike, uh, for instance, Denton can do a, uh, apply for a project anywhere in Denton <coughs> under this program. In our case, the only two neighborhoods that qualify are, sorry, I was going to sneeze, uh, Brewer Hill and Chihuahua Hill. And uh, we've been applying for these funds since the late 90s, uh, probably earlier. Uh, I believe there's probably only been three years that we didn't uh, actually receive funding because, uh, uh, and there have been a couple years that we actually received uh, regular infrastructure, CBG, and in Colonia, uh, Colonia yeah. uh, project as well. Uh, there's a there's a Colonia that only as in uh, for communities uh, within 100 miles of the, the Mexican border and all that in the Colonia program. It's, it's sort of the last shoot of uh, uh, the Colonia state, the federal designation. Um, so we've, we've funded a lot of projects. Uh, uh, for instance, we've almost replaced all the water lines in both Brewer Hill and Chihuahua Hill. And what we've been doing is applying for water line replacement, and then the following year coming back and applying for street and drainage improvements in the same areas where we just replaced uh, the, the water lines. And we've, we've done most of Chihuahua Hill and and on uh, Brewer Hill, there's, I believe we're close to about seven or eight million dollars in funding since uh, 2000 that I've been been around. Uh, so Robert and Pierre have done an excellent job writing these grants, getting this funding. Uh, so it's it's uh, that's been one of those contributing factors to our water conservation as far as this this project because. Uh, we've been able to replace the water lines in the oldest infrastructure parts of town and 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 uh, uh, be able to avoid that water loss because of the old water lines uh, without having to, to budget directly out of city local funds. We've been able to, to focus on those neighborhoods in the old areas. Then I have a question. Um, just for clarification, was the Metropolitan Redevelopment Area, is that eligible for CDBG? Or is it, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 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 so that's our third area. Okay. Because I just remember that and being part actually, of it. Actually, even if parts of it weren't in the, mm -hmm. uh, that neighborhood, because of the Metropolitan, the, uh, redevelopment. metropolitan redevelopment, those specifically do qualify for CDBG. Okay, so now that means we've kind of, when we did that, we kind of expanded the area that would qualify, if I remember correctly, when we did that, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I just thought you, you brought it up, and I thought I'd just clarify it for, for me and for everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any further questions? Thank you, Mayor. Is there a motion? Mr. Brown, I have a question for you. Those water lines there on Chihuahua Hill, it's probably as old as me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is that old. The subdivision, if I remember right, the subdivision was planned in 1945. They're older than me then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, they are kind of old. <laughs> also, is this probably the we bring the source city colonies up to town, or do we still need some more water lines? Actually, there's a, there's a little bit more that, that would still need to be done in Chihuahua, but this would be 
this would complete, we'd probably have got 95% of the, of the whole neighborhood would be completed with this grant. After this grant, I should say. You know, since the 2000s through this period, about 95% would be complete. Thank you. Robert, you made me feel young. <laughs> and with that, I make approval of resolution number 20612, a resolution authorizing the submission of a New Mexico Community Development Block Grant Program application to the Department of Finance and Administration local government division and authorizing the mayor to act as town of Silver City's chief executive officer and authorized representatives in all matters pertaining to the town of Silver City participation in the community development block grant program. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Mr. Mayor, a uh, motion that I uh, will second that motion as stated. Thank you. Council Amon Smith. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Mackey, would you do a roll call, please? Councilor Cano? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Amon Smith? Aye. Councilor Benson? Aye. The resolution passes. The next item on the new business, item 12D, is the approval slash disapproval of bid 15-16-5 wastewater treatment plant grit removal system. Mr. Brown. Uh, Mayor Council, this is actually our colonial infrastructure, one of our colonial infrastructure projects from uh, Cal uh, the 2015 awards and um, we were awarded $457,824 uh, from the Colonial Infrastructure Award. Uh, we received one bid on the project from Smithco Construction out of Caballo, New Mexico, in the amount of $477,595 uh, with gross receipts tax. That would be $508,937.17. Um, as you can tell, we don't have enough money from the, the grants, uh, but because the project will be under construction into next fiscal year, um, it's staff's recommendation that we award the project and that and the remaining 50 some thousand dollars or 40 some thousand uh, be budgeted in next calendar year's budget. Any, any questions for Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown, I just have a question. Councilor Amon Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Mr. Brown, the construction would uh, span into next year. Do you know when it would begin? I believe it begins uh, in May. Oh, okay. If the project is awarded tonight, then uh, we would issue a notice of award to the contractor, typically have about uh, 10 days before we would have a pre-construction meeting with the contractor. At, at that time, go over all the contract documents and everything, have the contract signed. And then at that time, we would, we would establish a notice to proceed date where the contract would actually commence. Uh, we'd probably be looking at about mid-April, mid to, to late April for the notice to proceed. And then we're looking at about six months for construction. And, and part of that is there's a, a large lead time in the equipment that has to be ordered, manufactured, and delivered. And, and that would be the largest part of the, of the contract price. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, um, I move to approve a bid number 15 slash 16 dash 5 water Wastewater treatment plant grit removal system per staff's recommendation to Smithco Construction Incorporated for $477,595 without GRT. 
Okay, that's so, what so that was going to be paid Plus GRT. I stand corrected. So, for do you want me to read out the whole total of the 500? No. Okay. Uh, okay, so for $477,595, w- with GRT? With the digital. With the plus it should, GRT. It plus, be plus GRT. Plus GRT. Yeah, I was going to make sure I say that right. Yes. Okay, someone's got a second. Yes, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councilor Ryan Smith. Thank you. I will second that motion as finally stated. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's why I was able to do Okay, we have a motion as finally stated and a, and a, and a second. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. aye.